Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at creating a unique ID in your Power Apps. We're going to piece together some pre-generated letters, add it to a random number to give us a unique reference. This is by no means the only way to achieve this and it may not be the best way for your purposes. This should give you an idea of how you can use this sort of thing in your Power Apps. Okay, so here's what we're going to end up with. Now, I wouldn't create an entire app just to generate this unique ID. I'd find places within my app where I'm probably going to need to generate a unique ID and pass it out to whatever process I'm following. So here we have a unique ID in the middle that's made up of three letters, hyphen, four random digits, hyphen, and then FS. So if I change the document type up here to finance, we'll notice the first three letters change, F-I-N, and the four digits also changed. Again, I-C-T, I-C-T, and the four digits changed, general, general, and the four digits change. I've also got a button here that I can click that will keep randomly regenerating those four digits so I can ensure I have a unique number. So let's take a look at the first piece of the puzzle. So in my on visible for my screen, I initially create a context called random number and I assign a random number to it using this formula. Then later on, I reuse the exact same formula to refresh and also for the on change of the drop down. So let's take a closer look at this formula. So let's take a quick look at the first part of the formula, which is the part that generates the random number. So if I click and add a new label in here, we'll take a look at it piece by piece. So the first part of the formula that we use is the rand function, which gives us a random number between zero and one with multiple decimal places. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make this more um, generic uh, and easier to use in my text. I don't want the decimal points. So I can times it by the number of digits that I'm gonna to want to use in my um, unique ID. So for example here, if I wanted to use just one digit, I can times it by 10, two digits times it by 100, three digits times it by 1000, which is what I've done in mine. Now this bit's fine, um, but what we actually need to do is we need to now get rid of the decimal places. So we need to use the round function. So the round function allows us to give it a number and tell us by how many digits we want to round it by. So if we use zero, it's going to remove all those decimal places and give us just a whole integer. Now this looks like what we need, but the problem is if there's any zeros in that, when we convert it to uh, a unique ID, it's going to get rid of those zeros. So what we have to do is we have to tell it that it's a text and we have to tell it what we want the format of that text to be. Now we can do this by um, using the zero, zero hash descriptor. Uh, what that will do is it will tell us that it always has to have this many preceding zeros before the number. So you can see what it's done there where I've said it needs three zeros and then the final number. It's added a zero on the end and that will carry on doing that on the beginning, sorry, and it will carry on doing it. So we can keep working our way down. Now for ours, we just want it a zero, zero hash, which is perfect. Um, we could add that on if we wanted to. Um, obviously, if you wanted to have a larger number, we can increase the number of digits that we're using. And then again in here, we can increase the number of digits that we wanna make sure we have in there. So now that we understand the first part of our generator, um, we just need to understand what we're doing with update context. I won't go into too much detail. I'll do that in another video. This is basically a variable that is scoped to this screen. So we can access this variable called random number anywhere else within this screen. And um, we can also update it. So now if we go and look at our dropdown. So in our dropdown, I've literally, rather than connected to a data source, I've given it specific items. So I know that the choices are none, finance, ICT, or general. You'll also notice that in my on change, I have this update context. So I'm continually updating that random number just so that it's constantly random. I don't want it to get stuck as a single number and be reused over and over again. Now from there, I need to define from each of these um, choices what the initial text will be. So if we go here and we take a look at the text property on my label, I'm using a switch statement. Again, I won't go into too much detail about a switch statement. Um, it's just a simplified and easier way of um, asking something if a value is something else, what value it should return. So in here I'm saying, check the document type dropdown, which is my dropdown, the selected value. If it's finance, I want to use FIN. If the dropdown is ICT, I want to use ICT. If it's general, 
I want it to use gen. And if it's anything else, I want it to use uni. So what that does then is as part of this uh, function called the concatenate function, it will put together all of these texts into a single text line here. So the first text being the switch statement that gives me fin, ICT, gen, or uni, and then add in a hyphen. Then I'm using my random number, which is the context variable that we've already generated in our other function. And then I'm just adding FS to the end, FS for fluid SharePoint. So that's it. So all together now, when I load this screen, my on visible updates my random number. The text checks against the drop down to see which um, option is selected and updates the front. Also, because I have an on change um, action there, it's also updating the number. And then this icon simply has an on select that updates the context random number, again with the same function. So we can just click through here. And that's it. I hope that helps you guys figure out how to create unique IDs or at least gives you some idea of different ways you can do things. I'll post the formula onto my blog, which I'll link to in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope the video provided some value for you. If it did, please remember to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also head over to my website, www.fluid-sharepoint.com. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If there's any content you'd like to see in future, please let me know.